Do you feel like you and your husband are kind of like roommates? You know, it's just all about kind of logistical things. Like, are you going to pick up Trevor from his soccer practice or am I going to pick him up? Oh, uh, are you going to be the one that pops by the pizza place and gets pizza on the way home from work? Are you going to do it? Are you going to throw in the load of laundry or should I do that? Like, it's just logistical things because you're so doggone busy, right? But here's an interesting way to look at this, and I'm going to challenge you to look at it this way. You make time for what you say is important. You make time to brush your teeth, probably. You probably make time to take a shower occasionally. You make time to take Trevor to his soccer practice and to throw in the load of laundry and to put some food on the table. You make time for the things that you say are important. Your marriage is also important. If you don't tend to the garden of your marriage, it will wither on the vine over a course of years until you know the kids are grown up and gone away and you're like, who is this person I'm even married to? I don't even know this person. I don't even like this person. I'm not even connected or bonded to this person whatsoever. Who is this person? Right? Don't let that happen to you. Instead, I'm going to challenge you, even in the busy season of life that you might be in with small children, to be intentional, to be diligent about carving out some time to bond with your husband. And I'm going to even say this, ladies. Your husband, most men are drawn to their wives when they're physically bonded to them. It's just a fact of life. And you can enjoy this too, by the way. There's something about that physical union and a husband seeing his wife initiating, making love with him, that draws his heart. He's supposed to be intoxicated with your love, ladies. Listen to what the Bible says to husbands, to men, in Proverbs 5, starting verse 18. It's kind of erotic. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, like a loving doe and a graceful deer. Let her breasts satisfy you at all times. Be exhilarated always with her love. Some translations say, be intoxicated always with her love. When's the last time you intoxicated your husband with, 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 with your love? When's the last time you even let him see you naked? Because most women are like, oh, if I let him see me naked, then he's going to want to have sex. I don't have time for that. Make time for that, ladies. I hope none of my children or stepchildren or grandchildren are listening to this are going to be freaked out. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. You make time for what's important. Carve out time, even if it's once a week, maybe more, but at least once a week, carve out time. You know, tell yourself in the morning, tonight's the night. I'm going to carve out time, even if it's 15 minutes or half an hour, that I'm going to let him see my naked body because men enjoy seeing their wife's naked body. Even with stretch marks, even if you're overweight, I'm going to let him see my naked body. I'm going to initiate making love. His heart will be drawn to me, will we'll connect physically. And from that physical connection often comes an emotional connection as well. It's like icing on the cake, the frosting on the cake. So will you be diligent about this? Let me leave you with this little proverb, this little nugget from Proverbs 21.5. The plans of the diligent lead to abundance. I want you to have an abundant marriage, not just a roommate marriage where you don't even know this person after 30 years that you're married to. How about planning and being diligent and intentional so that you have an abundant marriage? I know that's what you want. It starts by being intentional.